Chapter 12. One morning in the middle of May, I awakened to hear Timothy taking great breaths. It sounded as though he were fighting for air. I listened a moment and then asked, are you all right, Timothy? He wheezed back. Viva, Malar. I had to think a moment to understand what he was talking about. Fever, malaria. I reached over to touch him. His forehead was burning hot, his breath coming in big, harsh sighs. He said, I got malaria again, Philippe. Twill go away, but fetch some water. When I had had fever in Virginia and at Charlou, my mother had given me aspirin and then put cold cloths on my head. But we had no aspirin on the key, of course, and the water was always warm. I poured some water from the keg and gave it to him. He gulped it and then fell back on the mat. For a while, I listened to his heavy breathing and then ripped a piece of cloth from what was left of my shirt, dampened it with water, and placed it on his forehead. He murmured, that be good. But suddenly he began to shiver, even though the morning air was already warm. I could hear his teeth clacking. I had nothing to cover him with, so I just sat beside him holding the cloth, which was already beginning to dry to his forehead. His breath, was like air from a furnace. It must have been about 10 o'clock when Timothy began to mumble and laugh. It sounded almost as if he were talking in his sleep, but the laughter, little bursts of it between the wheezes, was very high and strange. I couldn't keep the cloth on his head because he was tossing from side to side. I talked to him constantly, but he didn't even seem to know I was there. Once he got up, but fell back down to the mat. And I told him to stay very still. For a long time, he did, because he began to shiver again. When that ended, the mumbling and high laughter started all over. At about noontime, the mumbling got worse and I could feel him trying to get to his feet. I clung to his arm, shouting for him to lie down again, but he threw me aside as if I weren't there. I could hear him crashing down the hill toward the sea, the frightening laughter echoing back. I followed the trail of laughter. Then I heard splashing, and I knew he'd gone into the water. I yelled, Timothy, Timothy, come back. Suddenly, it became dead quiet. I screamed his name again and again. There was no answer. I reached the beach and waded out to my knees, then began to move slowly along, trying to keep on a line with the beach. I had gone about 30 steps when I fell over Timothy's body, plunging down in the water. Holding on to him with one hand, I got on my feet again. The upper part of his body was floating, but I knew his feet were dragging on the bottom. I put my face against his mouth. Yes, he was still breathing. I worked myself around, to put both hands under his shoulders, but he was too heavy that way. Then I clasped my hands under his chin and began to pull him out. He made strange sounds, but did not try to help me. It took me what seemed like a long time to get Timothy out of the water and back up on the damp sand. 
he must have weighed 220 or 30 pounds, and I could only move him two or three inches at a time. I sat beside him for almost an hour in the hot sun while he rested quietly, his breathing not so harsh now. Then I realized he was shivering again. I knew I could not drag him up the slope to the shelter of the hut, so I tore off branches of sea grape and put them over his body. The grape leaves cut the rays of the sun. I brought water down from the hut, raised his head, and ordered him to drink it. With one hand, I found his lips and then guided the cup to his chin. He seemed to understand and gulped it down. I stayed by him the rest of the long afternoon while he slept. When he awakened, it was early evening and had turned cool again. He was breathing easily now, and I knew the fever had broken because his forehead was no longer hot. Sitting up, he said weakly, <clears throat> How did I get down here? I told him he'd run down the hill. That devil, the fever, Timothy sighed. I said, you went into the water. You scared me, Timothy. That be true, he said. My head burned with fire and I put it out. I helped him to his feet and we went up the hill together, Timothy leaning on me for support for the first time. He never really regained his strength.